Do you love books about starting over, small town bakeries, grumpy sunshine romances, and found families? Well, stay tuned for a new contemporary romance that is going to warm your heart and your oven. Hello, Swoon Squad. Welcome to While You Were Reading, a podcast for contemporary romance readers. I'm your host, USA Today bestselling romantic comedy author, Lisa Daly. So today on While You Were Reading, I am super excited that we are going to be talking with New York Times bestselling author, Jill Chavez, who's author of The Friendship Pack and The Family You Bake. Jill has a brand new book out coming on June 13th called The Sweetheart List, and I am super excited to talk to her about it. Welcome, 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 everybody. Uh, I am super, super excited to have Jill Chavez with us today here on While You Are Reading. And she is the author of, uh, this blew my mind, a hundred books. A hundred yeah. books. <laughs> That's just phenomenal. But her new one, I love this, and the new one, which I was just playing with, is called The Sweetheart List. And I absolutely love this book. Um, it's so like literally from the first page. It's so um, warm. You feel like you know the characters like right away. You're. Uh, I was really impressed with how real everybody felt immediately because a lot of times it takes authors, uh, you know, a while to kind of build up that little world. So before we get going any farther, first, welcome. So glad you're here today. Thank you for having me. Always, always happy that uh, to uh, to find an author whose books I have not read before. I can't believe I've not read your books before because <laughs> there are so many of them, and there they're exactly lot. they're exactly my kind of books. So I mean, I'm all That's about a, like. Go I ahead. started writing them when I was twelve. That's how come I have a hundred, and I'm not quite sure I believe that number, but people keep saying <laughs> it to me. So maybe I should add them up myself and see and see and check. They go like, "Nope, it's only ninety eight. Of course, if it was only ninety eight, then you'd have to like crank out another couple, you know, just to just to make your PR true. I think that's an important thing. So tell us a little bit about uh, the sweetheart list because it's just delightful. Oh, thank you so much. This book tortured me. I will say that some books flow and some mm-hmm. books don't. And this one did not until maybe the fourth or fifth draft. And then suddenly it was magic from there on out. But, you know, it tortured me for a good four months leading into it. I don't know why that is. Some hurt and some don't. That is true. That is absolutely true. There was, um, I had, so when I was writing um, uh, Single Minded, uh, which is a book that I wrote about uh, eight years ago, I it was, I had just gone through divorce. It was like so rough and it's, a, uh, it's about so much falling in love. But <laughs> the great thing about it is like, and the first draft was terrible. My agent was like, this is supposed to be a romantic comedy. It's not romantic. It's not funny. We don't even meet the guy to like page 80. And the, um, and so when I rewrote the second draft of it, or well, it was like the eighth draft, did you know? <laughs> um, but when I rewrote it, I had, by that point, had like I had met someone and we were falling in love. And so like the difference of writing that book when I was having the experience of falling in love versus when I was very much not in love was like such a huge difference. And I think that was probably for me, like you, one of the more painful ones that I've written. And I don't like it. It's, I mean, I love the book. It's hard. It is, you right? You have to believe in what you're writing, even if it's fiction. And if you're not believing in love, it's really hard. It's that really wasn't hard. necessarily my problem. My problem was it was the end of, towards the end of COVID, but I still had all of my people living in my house. That was 11 mm-hmm. of us, including two babies and four dogs and way too many people. And so it's it was just really hard to think. Right. But once I got past that and I fell in love with Bodhi for one thing, this hero, oh my God, he stuck with me forever. I wish he was real. <laughs> we're gonna talk about <laughs> we're gonna talk about Bodhi. We have a whole yeah. section where we're okay. gonna talk about okay. Bodhi. Because once I realized this book was really kind of about him, mm-hmm. it it worked after that. I 
it definitely worked. What I was going to say about uh, Single Minded, it was that that ended up being one of the books that I loved the most because it was so challenging. Is that true for you with yes. the Sweetheart List? Yeah. Any book that tortures you and that you end up somehow loving anyway, <laughs> I think becomes a favorite. And so forever, this will be that book. Yeah, I, I, it's really, it's really wonderful. Uh, so to give us a little um, hint about the plot. Can you sort of give us a little of the basic sure. setup? This basic setup has actually been in my mind for a long time. I've always wanted to write a story about a woman who realized that she was unhappy in every single aspect of her life and it was her own fault. So this woman, Harper, decides to go back to the last place that she found happiness and joy. And that happened to be when she was 12 years old, the last summer she had with her mom in Lake Tahoe, which is a miles and miles and miles, 600 miles actually away from L.A. where she was. And so this woman just gets in her car with her dog and drives back to Tahoe to start over. And I really found joy in that premise. Uh, too bad it took me four months to find joy in the actual writing of this book, but I really love the setup. So the first thing she does is what makes her happy, and that's baking. So she opens a bakery. She meets a man, you know, a grumpy guy who kind of appeals to her. She can't figure out why. And a runaway teenager. So that, and along with her dog and all the bears she meets in Tahoe, there was a lot. <laughs> I, I love that. We are going to get to Bodhi because he is super, super delicious. Um, and I'm going to skip ahead because you actually mentioned something that is close to a question that I wanted to ask you. Uh, the question is the this idea of a do-over and moving to from the big city into a place where um, it's a lot more nature and a lot fewer people. Um, this is something that you have some familiarity with. Is is that true? Absolutely. I'm a city girl. I was born in New York. I grew up in LA. And when I was, we were, I don't know, late 20s, we left LA and went, moved to the mountains with three children under the age of five. And I can't say I recommend that, but it actually worked out pretty darn good for us. But for me, it was the the concept of this big city where you are, there's a nominee and, you know, you don't know, you go to the grocery store and you don't see anyone, you know, you, know, you can go weeks without running into anyone, you know, in LA. Right. We moved to this small town near Lake Tahoe and suddenly you go to the grocery store and you see your dentist in aisle one and your gynecologist in aisle two and the principal of your girl's school in aisle three. There is no secrets. There are no secrets in a town like this. And so I, I find a lot of humor in that mm -hmm. and, so that also saved this book was finding the humor in the everyday small town world. I think there's something so delightful about that. And you've really, I mean, obviously you're familiar with the area, but you really have done such a fantastic job of, uh, of bringing this to life. Um, I was also surprised because I thought the sweetheart list really read as a standalone, but mm -hmm. I was very surprised to learn that it's part of a series. Well, now readers, I have readers that love series and I have love readers. I have readers that love standalones. So I tried to do with this, this series is called the sunrise cove. And what I tried to do is appeal to both of those type of readers where it's only connected by the setting. Mm -hmm. So you can read them in any order you want. You're not going to miss anything. I promise. They always make me promise. I promise, promise. But it's also that, you know, you still get that same setting. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and, uh, and again, I have not read the other books, although I, they're definitely going on the TBR right after this. Uh, do you, I wondered as I was, you know, and I think this is like an author thing as I'm going through and I know now I know I'm halfway through and I now know, okay, it's, uh, it, this is actually a series. It's not a standalone. And so my brain of course is like, Ooh, it, do we get to see all the, all Bodie's like brothers matched up and like, is that the deal? Or is it just other people in the, um, in that Tahoe community? It's mostly just other people in the Tahoe community. However, sometimes it happens where other characters kind of walk onto this the page for me, and I can't stop thinking about them. And Bodhi's brothers are definitely that, specifically Mason, his mm -hmm. younger brother. So I, it could happen. It could definitely happen. I'll say 
Bodie was hard to stop thinking about and Mace as well. So I could see that you created quite the problem for yourself, yes, right? Well, part of it is I love, I love the heroes. I mean, for me, it's always about the hero mm-hmm. and I love a good bromance. So these brothers definitely spoke to me. Yeah. Well, I, I really, really love that. I, I, I really thought that was absolutely fantastic. And, um, and what's kind of cool about this setup is that um, he has the bar and then the, you know, uh, we've got a new friend who has the bookstore. And then we've got Harper right there with the, well, she's opened a bakery, which is, I think, the dream for a lot of people, isn't it? To open a Definitely. bakery. <laughs> to eat cookies all day long. Yes. Right? <laughs> like, you're like, I'm not eating cookies. I'm market <laughs> testing. Right now, I market test. <laughs> I market test a lot of cookies in my life. Um, one of the things I thought was super cool about this was that uh, sort of the fish out of water element, right? You have the city girl coming into uh, into the um, you know smaller town. What? were some of the issues that you really wanted to, as someone who had experienced this yourself, what were some of the issues that you really wanted to sort of play up in the book for her? Well, I often use um, the fish out of water or the the comedy in that scenario right. as a way to break any of the serious, more serious elements I've put into the story. So I knew going in that, you know, she's walked away from everything she's ever known. And that can be terrifying. So I wanted to find the humor in the fish out of water story. So an example would be when she runs into the bear very early on in the story because she didn't lock her car and she left popcorn in her car. Well, if you live here, you know, that's the huge no-no. But if you don't live here, it would never in a million years occur to you that a bear is going to climb into your car and eat your popcorn, your beloved popcorn. So for me, that that was just a way of easing some of the tension, Those that fish out of water story. I love that. I personally live in a bear area uh, myself and we can't like we can't put our garbage out the night before. Right. You have to put it out the next morning because the bears will come and eat it and every then, time, every time. And then, you, and then you end up with bears swimming in your pool. And yeah. <laughs> I'm convinced that our bears wait they know that our trash is thursday they they wait all night wednesday night for us to open up the cabinet <laughs> and then there they are <laughs> and bring it up i bet they do they're so so smart i have no idea what this why this came to mind but i just saw a video that my daughter showed me the other day of this guy who had like done these squirrel obstacle courses to get like because the squirrels kept eating the bird food and he did this whole thing in the backyard so what i'm wondering is i feel like if there was going to be a bear obstacle course that your bears have already been training for a while. Yes, so. they have been training for a long time. That's really nice. Uh, so one of the things that I really love about the Sweetheart List was that you have such a strong theme of found family and sort of families of origin, both, you know, kind of working together. Um, and I, and just in looking at some of your other books, I noticed that this seems to be a theme that you come back to. It's one of those things maybe that you love. So can you tell me a little bit about that? What is it about that particular theme of family found family that is so appealing to you? I see a big smile coming. Uh, but, you know, one of the things is to, this actually has nothing to do with the actual question, but coming up with a conflict, a believable conflict mm-hmm. in a contemporary rom-com or romance is hard. You don't have a ghost. You don't have guns. You don't have the zombie apocalypse coming. And it can be really difficult to be make a believable conflict between the right. hero and the heroine unless you widen the circle to their, the people that they love and care about, the people that they love and care about, what those people are actually doing. Mm-hmm. And so- for me, it's just natural to include the families because a lot of times that's where you can get some good conflict in. <laughs> well, like, that's true, do? right? <laughs> so from a purely you know, logical standpoint, I have to have a cast of thousands to make this work because these are bigger books and you can't just have two people locked in a cabin right. with like there's no conflict for me there. Right. So by widening the story, it includes their friends and family. Love that. Absolutely love that. Uh, So 
Switching gears a little bit here, uh, one of your books, uh, The Trouble with Mistletoe, was made into a feature film, and I know that you have several others optioned for television, and I think that as soon as everybody reads The Sweetheart List, they are going to want to see it on the screen. So have you had any interest, TV-wise, film-wise, yet for this series or this book, or where is it no. under wraps? What's Neither. Gonna- I, no, I have not yet. For I mean that I know of. I'm hoping somebody out there is reading this book and is interested. I have other interests and other options for other series, but not for this one and not for this book. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. It has to feel so delightful. I think that's such a dream for a lot of authors to see your book made into a feature film. How was it? (laughs) It was pretty awesome. I mean, I'm a big TV fan, a big movie fan. So that's always been the dream Mm -hmm. for me. And um, I really enjoyed that it was that particular book. Although I was really surprised because in The Trouble with Mistletoe, the heroine runs a pet shop. And so there's animals everywhere in that book. And I thought, well, that's out of all 100 books, if that happens to be true, <laughs> out of all 100 books, this is, they picked the hardest book out of all of them because they need all of these animals. <laughs> but oh it was great. Gosh. They did it. It was awesome. Oh, I love that. That is absolutely fantastic. All right. Now we're getting to the good part. Bodhi. <laughs> <laughs> what, do, favorite, what do yes. we, what do we, what do you think makes him such a good book boyfriend? You know, the funny thing is, is when I started this book, it was just about Harper. It was all her story. And then in the c- first scene where she, you know, doesn't lock her car up at night and she looks out the next morning and sees this guy trying to scare away the bear for her. He just walked onto the page and just wouldn't go away. I just fell in love with him. He was so grumpy and yet so compassionate and uh, responsible and, and kind of badass in that way. He How really he protected his family and cared so much about things, even though he was grumpy all the time. And he has a really good reason for that. He has a backstory that gives him very good reason to be grumpy and to be sad, but he's not actually sad. He's doing going on, moving forward the best that he can. Yeah. Well, and I think that I think that one of the things that I really love about this is kind of the power of love to help people get through the hard stuff that they need to get through. And that sometimes that makes it more challenging, but also, um, you know, that that inspiration can really you know, be the thing that propels real humans and fictional ones, uh, you know, into a better life. So I I think that's really fantastic. Love, love, loved him. He was absolutely fantastic. Uh, And the Swoon Squad, you guys are going to be super excited because we are actually giving away a copy of the Sweetheart List. And if you would like to win that, you just want to go to whileyouareading.com and you can enter down at the bottom of the page. All right, let's talk what we're reading. Uh, Every week, uh, my favorite contemporary romance authors and I trade book recommendations. They tell me what they think I'd like. I tell them what I think they'd like. uh, And everybody's TBR pile gets a lot higher. Uh, So Jill, I know that you have uh, not very much time to read what with the writing of 100 books. (laughs) It's not even that. It's more that it's difficult for me to read in the genre that I write. But for you, I will try to tell you what I've read in the past here and there. My last, latest, most current read was The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood, which I loved and adored. I love her too. She has a new book coming out pretty soon, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, She is absolutely wonderful. And I, don't you just love the fact that um, Allie's books have brought with them this whole new sort of subgenre of like these STEM romances. I, my sexy nerds. Yes. Bring it on. I love it. Bring on the sexy nerds. That is exactly right. Uh, my daughter is a STEM girl and I, I just love it. I, I think she's such a wonderful writer and I'm, I'm delighted that she's blown onto the scene. So thank you for that recommendation. That is an excellent one. You know, I picked it up because it said STEM and two of my three daughters were STEM, are STEM. And so I, 
I was prepared to be like, okay, it's really hard to do this, to do it right. And she nailed it. I loved every page of it. She totally did nail it. Oh my gosh. She was totally amazing. So speaking of nailing it, I actually have a book recommendation for you, which I think that you are going to like. Uh, it's actually a new release. So you might not have time to read it while you're working, but, um, I think you really might enjoy it. It is uh, Kate Bromley's Chow for Now. And the reason that I thought that you might enjoy it is that it is also a fish out of water story. And it's about a woman who is, um, she's an older student. She, just like Harper, has uh, decided that she, you know, she's like a late in life student, wants to go back and be a fashion designer. So she's sort of remaking her life, uh, you know, to be the one that she wants. And the the story is set in Rome, which is wonderful, just like Tahoe is just like such a great, you know, it's like an extra character in the book. And, um, and she does such a nice job with it. But there are some similarities, even though the books are very different, that I think anyone who would write the sweetheart list would probably really love to read Chow for now. So I'll that's give it a try. Thank you. All right. You're so welcome. So that's my book am, recommendation for you. <laughs> All is, right. Am I up? Is it my turn to go again? <laughs> oh, you have another one? Oh, I love that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, my, an old favorite of mine is Sophie Kinsella. <gasps> I love her. I love her so, so, so much. Um, I ha I'm not caught up on her last few, but Remember Me and Can You Keep a Secret were two of my big, huge favorites. And the Shopaholic series, series was a favorite. Yeah, the whole series. The whole series. Oh, she is so good. Now, uh, you know what's so funny? I love those books, and I think I've read probably every other, or like every one of them. And I had a weird phenomenon when I was reading, you know, because uh, Sophie Kinsella is a pen name. She also writes under Madeline, Madeline Wickham, is it? I never really got into those in the same way, even though I knew intellectually same author. And I've I have never read her other voice, her other. So I don't know anything about that. Yeah, it's kind of funny. And I don't know if it was just a slightly different voice, um, but but it was really interesting that I, I did read one about a wedding that I really enjoyed and loved, but I never really got into the other ones. And I, I was just wondering if anyone else, since you're a Sophie Kinsella reader, if you also had that same bizarre. Experience. For me, it's the heart wants what the heart wants, right? As yeah. a reader, and and because I'm a huge reader, I consider, I actually consider myself a reader first and then an author, which is, <laughs> you know, but anyway, so yeah, the heart wants what it wants. If you don't like, if you don't mesh with the voice, move on. It's okay. You love yeah. her other stuff. <laughs> I know. I love so many. Well, and I shouldn't say I didn't like, I just wasn't as attracted to those books. And again, no idea why, but I love her writing. She is just absolutely incredible. Let's talk tropes. All right. So this book has several of my favorite tropes. It's got grumpy sunshine, fish out of water, opposites attract, somebody's got a dark secret, and we've got a wounded hero. Will you be my book boyfriend? So what makes Bodhi such a good book boyfriend? Well, first of all, he's going to stop to help you if you are stuck on the side of the road. And I think that that cannot, you know, be stated enough. He has a dangerously sexy dimple. He's got some scars. And I think we all know that the chicks dig the scars. He's the strong, silent type. He's a wounded hero. And you guys are going to just fall head over heels for this guy. I mean, like, Seriously. That's right. Bodie's a four ring book boyfriend. So let's bring that boy home to mama. If you'd like to win a copy of the Sweetheart List, all you need to do is go to whileyouareading.com uh, to enter. You can just enter right down there at the bottom of the page. Good luck. I'm pulling for you. Seriously. Good luck. I hope you win. Thanks so much for listening to the podcast today. It's so helpful when you guys subscribe and leave ratings or reviews. So I just want to say thank you for doing that. I really appreciate it. And we will see you next week. You will not believe who we are going to have on the show, but you guys are going to love it. All right, everybody. See you next time.